Hello everyone and welcome to an extremely complicated game from round 4 of the FIDE World Cup 2021. It's Radoslav Wojtoszek versus Magnus Carlsen and uh, like we said there are 32 uh, two players left in the FIDE World Cup uh, and this is the first game that we're going to show from round 4. So let's check it out. Uh, like I said, really complicated one and you'll see that even though it's a classical game uh, there simply was not enough time to, uh, to, to play out all the variants in this game and we're just going to show a few of them. Uh, since it's uh, it's very enjoyable, but it is extremely complicated. So without further ado, uh, Wojtaszek with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6 by Magnus, uh, uh, c4, e6, g3, and now d5. So we have the Catalan opening on the board, bishop to g2, and bishop to e7. We have knight to f3, and both players castles. So castles, castles, and now there are a couple of very, very popular lines. Um, uh, there are over a thousand uh, games in the database with uh, each of these ideas. For example, d captures on c4, c6 is an idea, and I beat to d7. Many, many moves here, but Magnus chooses one that uh, hasn't been played all that much, maybe some 30 games in the database. Uh, he advances the pawn uh, on the queen side to a5, but like I said, it's not a new move. So queen to c2, Wojtaszek continues developing, we have c6 and knight b to d2 now. And there is uh, one game where uh, knight to a6 was played, but here we have b6 by Magnus, and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how Radek continues here. We have e4 striking in the center, if black allows it, why not? Bishop to b7, uh, and now rook to d1. Uh, developing the rook, also the queen is still on d8, so make, def definitely makes sense. We have knight to a6, and now uh, the knight will uh, have to figure out how to get into the game. Uh, maybe via the b4 square, but maybe something like knight to c7, then to, to d5 if this pawn ever moves. Uh, but it, uh, it really all depends on what white plays. So here we have e5 attacking the knight on f6, knight to d7, and now uh, c captures on d5. Magnus now plays knight to b4, attacking the queen first before uh, recapturing on d5, queen to b1, and now not knight captures, but rather c captures on d5, promoting this pawn to a central pawn and freeing up the c6 square for the knight if needed, if white plays a3 at some point. So here uh, the the knight here not really doing all that much, blocking the bishop, so knight f1, this knight is being shifted over to e3, bishop to a6 now, with this pawn now on a light square on d5, the bishop isn't really doing all that much here, so we might as well uh, improve the, the activity of this bishop, and at some point, uh, if uh, the, the bishop really will be useless, and it might be all of your pawns here on light squares, you might even decide to trade it with something like bishop to e2, maybe captures on f3, uh, and so on. So knight to e3, and now rook to c8 by Magnus. Putting the rook on the only open file on the board, we have a3 chasing away the knight, knight to c6, and now we have b3. And here uh, the position is very, very complicated. There are so many ways you can continue with black here. Uh, so many options. And Magnus took uh, over 35 minutes, I think, for his next move because there's a lot to consider. Uh, like we said, bishop to e2 is always an idea. Uh, for example, if you go so something like this, attack the rook and the knight, let's say rook d2, captures, captures, and then you want to uh, attack white's um, uh, advanced center because white's uh, center is really, really strong. So, of course, we will undermine it at some point with f6. Uh, but before doing this, Magnus first plays b5, and b5 uh, asks white, what is your plan? What are you doing here? I can always play this idea. Uh, I'm, I'm going to continue pushing my pawns on the queen side. Uh, what are you going to do? So here, uh, Radek plays h4, uh, grabs more space on the king side, also makes some room for the king if needed, uh, and now b4. And now he has to decide whether he wants to play captures, but then he allows uh, captures by uh, multiple uh, choices. This can capture, this can capture, this can capture probably knight captures uh, this pawn is nicely defended by the queen and the knight is now beautiful and before there's no a pawn or c pawn to uh, dislodge it from there uh, so uh, Radek decides to keep the queen side closed with a4 and now Magnus goes for this bishop to e2 idea we have rook to d2 uh, bishop captures bishop captures and now that the remover uh, not remover defender of the center has been removed uh, we have f6 now uh, challenging white's very strong center. So by playing f6, black also left something behind. Now the e6 pawn is very, very weak, so uh, Radek just attacks it. And there's no way to defend the e6 pawn other than to advance the pawn all the way to f5. So this way white uh, keeps the center closed and he doesn't have to worry about uh, those knights uh, coming alive anytime soon. So here f5 by Magnus, the only way to defend the e6 pawn. And now uh, if you move the knight, if you move the bishop, then uh, black pretty much just gets uh, what, what 
black once you, you have f4 you have bishop captures on h4 there are so many ideas here so uh radic just goes knight captures on f5 and it makes sense to, to destroy uh black center even further and then your own center will become much much stronger plus also after e captures and bishop captures you grab two pawns for a piece also you're attacking h7 so you can't really uh, expect um uh, you know, to, to have a bad game here. And of course, g6 just runs into bishop captures on, uh, either on g6 or on e6, and it's going to be uh, a pretty bad game. If white wants, white can, white can need even uh, grab an instant draw here, for example. Magnus doesn't want to allow this. So after this bishop captures on, uh, on f5, we have bishop captures on h4. And now, <laughs> what do you play here? It's a really, really uh, tricky, tricky position. Uh, you could decide to capture the bishop right away. It, uh, this was played in the game. Uh, but also, you can do pretty much anything else. You can capture on h7. We will show what happens uh, if bishop captures on h7. And I don't think there is enough time, even in a classical game, to calculate bishop captures on h7 because it's just uh, too much. For example, king to h8 and now queen to g6. And uh, check this out now queen to g5 and look at this setup here uh, i don't think we've ever seen this this is so so uh, incredible uh that uh, what, what do you even do here well here <laughs> white will play rook to d1 and attack the black queen and now magnus of course uh, will not uh, move the queen but will play knight captures on e5 and attack the white queen again and now after d captures now we're gonna capture with the queen and now uh we're attacking the rook on a1 so bishop to e3 so now the rooks are connected but now magnus has for example bishop captures on g3 and now you have to capture with the queen otherwise if this captures then you capture this with check so sorry about that uh, so queen would have to capture and for example queen captures f captures and now we're going to capture here on h7 uh, rook will capture on d5 the material is completely equal let's say rook to f3 as the white is attacking the a5 pawn and we get this position where who knows what is happening and uh, well uh, e even if you're able to get all all the way to here in your head and then you know uh, still have to assess this position it's not going to be uh, easy and you're going to burn a lot of time and the players are already down uh, a lot uh, on time so after Carlson's bishop captures on h4 uh bishop captures on h7 was not played uh, an, an interesting idea is just rook to d1 maybe just uh, you know allowing the bishop to reclaim this square so maybe the queen can't come to g5 but also requires too much time and uh, after con uh, considering the position for a while uh, g captures on h4 was played and now the situation on the clock is some 37 minutes for for erotic and 15 minutes for magnus so that's not really a lot of time and magnus has to figure out how to uh, how to continue in this position now there are a lot of ways to continue uh this is even the position from the thumbnail now that i've made the dh4 square red now you realized it uh so feel free to pause the video here and uh you know let's see what you would play here while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on playing what Magnus played, queen captures on h4, but there seems to be an even greater line, and that is knight c captures on e5. And this is, uh, again, it, it, I would say impossible to calculate. Someone like Tal would maybe go into this without even calculating, but, uh, you know, uh, times have changed a lot. Uh, and uh, now, now the thing is, after d captures, you can play knight captures, and you don't even care about the rook. And the problem is, uh, if bishop captures on c8, you're going to play queen captures on c8 and now look at the position uh the white king is completely open the rook now has control of the f file the queen has access to the king side the knight is a monster here prepared to jump to f3 and there's no no way for white to continue the game uh because all of these squares look at this g6 covered by the knight this covered by the rook this covered by the pawn this covered by the knight and this uh so, well somewhat controlled by uh, by the queen and there's no square for the white queen if you try something like queen to c2 uh you don't really care just knight f3 and the white is getting checkmated king to f1 we're going to deliver queen to h3 check king e2 now comes knight to g1 with check again the king is cut off from the third rank you have to go back king to e1 now rook e8 check king d1 and let's say queen to f1 will be checkmate so really uh, just amazing stuff uh, and even if you don't play this after let's say this um, uh, queen comes to c8 uh, you, do, you don't play something like this what else are you going to play there's no way to activate your pieces for example rook to a2 uh, we just continue knight f3 check and it's the same idea king f1 rook e8 cuts off the king from the e file queen to h3 will 
uh, quickly decide things. There's no no defending this. Uh, so really uh, a crazy, crazy line. Uh, but like I said, after G captures on H4, uh, Magnus was already very much down on the clock. He played Queen captures on H4. And now the position is still uh, far from a draw. Uh, White has a, a variety of options that White can play. Uh, he played Bishop to E6 check. Now if you're wondering what's, what's with the Knight here, why, why not just capture the Knight? Well, then we uh, play this Knight captures on D4 move. And this Knight simply gets into the attack way, way too quickly. There's no... Uh, no real way to defend this, and it's just uh, uh, it, it's just uh, uh, completely completely lost uh, for uh, for white. Even if you play something like rook captures here, then of course you're no longer defending the the f2 pawn. You're getting checkmated, so it's uh, crazy crazy position. So of course the knight cannot be captured. Bishop to e6 check was played. King to h8, and now queen to d3. Radic finally gets his queen back into the game, uh, and now Magnus continues happily uh, giving up material. Knight d captures on e5 again offering the rook offering the knight everything is hanging here this is one very very enjoyable game uh, but i would also like to mention because this is a classical game and the players are very low on time that there was the um the well seemingly crazy queen to e7 it's a really really cool move that now uh, asks what do you do with the bishop and the problem is if bishop captures on d5 now now we play knight captures on c5 and after d captures knight captures now the position is um, a bit different because uh well uh, it, it's just a, a much much uh a better position for black uh, with the bishop on d5 now for example rook to e2 we try uh, pinning this knight but now black has rook captures and c1 with check rook captures and queen to g5 with check connecting with the rook here and after let's say queen to g3 you can't really leave your queen on d3 otherwise you're gonna lose it so queen g3 queen captures with check king to h2 now let's say knight g6 and the position is uh well what it is black is up upon uh, but not just that white the white king is completely wide open his uh, you know defenses are busted and it would be a much better position for black so uh, even moves like this are in the position but okay knight d captures on e5 was played we have d captures knight captures now with an attack on the queen but now queen captures on d5 and this is uh, opposed to queen being on d3 and the bishop on d5 a little better for white uh, so knight to f3 with check connecting with the rook here uh, but now uh, you can't really move if you if you move the king and it doesn't really matter where you move the king let's say king to g2 just queen to h2 check king to f1 queen g1 check and now after king to e2 there's queen to e1 check and now king d3 rook to c3 will be checkmate so extremely uh, ugly for for white so instead after knight to f3 check radek did the only thing he could uh, and that is queen captures on f3 so very 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 nicely done queen captures on f3 he gives up the queen and uh well what do you play now of course you have to capture it we have rook captures on f3 now bishop captures on c8 uh, and now well there's the problem of the back rank just uh, uh not at the moment the queen is guarding the d8 square but it is uh uh, it is very tough to you know handle this for black because you are you do have a queen but white has a bishop pair and if uh, the the rooks you know somehow get into the game could be could be very ugly and here magnus just goes back rook to f2 because he's already down to five minutes and radek has some uh, 13 minutes on the clock but if you weren't in a uh, in a rush to do this maybe h6 maybe rook capture some b3 all of this is in the position but it doesn't matter rook, rook f8 comes with tempo the bishop is under attack so bishop to b7 now uh, both players are below five minutes radek also spent some time on this bishop to b7 move and now queen to f6 attacking the rook uh, and uh, just asking what do you do and uh, this is a great move because it gives white uh, a lot of uh, options on, on how to go wrong. For example, if rook to b1, just queen g6 check picks up the rook. Uh, there's also that. And if you don't play uh, rook to b1, uh, you might also consider something like uh, rook a to a2 to get the rook into the game this way. But now we play queen e7. We attack the bishop and we either, uh, white will either lose this bishop or queen to e1 check. You're going to lose this bishop. So... Uh, of course, you don't want to lose any of your bishops. So after queen to f6, we have rook d to a2, the ugliest looking move possible, but it is what is needed to survive the position. So queen to f7 by Magnus now with an attack on the bishop and the b3 pawn. Uh, now Magnus saying I I, I didn't 
I have to capture the b3 pawn right away. I'm going to capture it now. So bishop back to g2. Queen captures some b3, grabbing that pawn, now creating the passed b pawn. Uh, bishop to e3, finally. The, the, the kind of completing development, and now rook to d8. And as Magnus played this, he was already extremely low on the clock, uh, going for the one-minute mark. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Radek was uh, also losing a lot of time, uh, but uh, interesting as it is, it was uh, in this position that the players agreed to a draw. So uh, I did, I don't know who who uh, who offered the draw. I imagine it was Magnus, uh, as uh, he he's the one that played the move. So I imagine he played the move and then offered the draw, and Radek was uh, spending some time to decide, or, or maybe it was it was Radek. But I, if I had to guess, I, I would guess it was Magnus. Uh, it looks like there's so much to play for, but uh, all the time in the world would not be enough because there are so many things you have to calculate here, and both players uh, well are still very much low on time and they still have to make five more moves uh, to reach time control both of them and so uh, i guess they agreed that the the fair result here is a draw so magnus will try uh, tomorrow with the white piece and radic will of course do his best to, to hold him off with the black piece but to give you an example uh, i let the engine crunch the, the the position a little bit here at some depth of 35 uh, you know uh, it would take uh, too, too much time as it's a, a complicated position uh, but for example white could continue with something like rook to e2 it's a it's a kind of a forced line because uh rook to d1 check is the idea that magnus had in mind when he played rook to d8 uh, but now we're still gonna play this rook to d1 check capture capture now check connecting with the rook so now bishop to f1 and here uh, although it seems like black now gets to push his past b pawn uh, not really because you have bishop to f4 magnus has a really weak back rank and this threat of checkmate um uh, uh, makes black waste a move. So here h5, wasting a move, and now bishop to e5. And now uh, things are already looking quite quite good for white uh, because, uh, well, you have a very nice bishop here. You're guarding the b2 square twice. There's no way to advance the pass pawn. And at some point, you're going to get the rook into the game. You're going to put the king on g to maybe get the bishop into the game. And, you know, could be could be very unpleasant if those uh, bishops and the rook become uh, fully operational. So after rook to d8, um, uh, players agreed to a draw. And uh, like I said, this amazing, amazing game was played. And there simply was not enough time to calculate all that was happening here. But such is the case when, uh, when you're playing classical chess and you have these uh, awesome uh, engine lines fully prepared. So, you know, when uh, you, you have to start crunching numbers in your head, it just uh, go goes out of hand. And you, you wa waste a lot of time. And then, you know, th this is the, the result. So really an awesome complicating, uh, complicated game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to check some of the other games. So do use hashtag suggestion. Uh, so I, you know, uh, spot them. There are 32 uh, more uh, players left. So uh, there are there's plenty to, to, to enjoy. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Stephen Wentworth, Matthew Parker, Tom Darrell, Richard Campbell, and Robert Walker for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.